Okay, hello everyone. My name is Eric Masowski, and in this tutorial we're going to add a little um, segment to the organic modeling series by taking a look at a couple different ways, one method in Photoshop and one method within 3D Studio Max that will allow you to add a little bit more detail to your textures and kind of combat the blurry washed out smudgy look that is often that often results from a lot of copying and pasting and cloning of different parts of an image. So this here is a blurred version of my texture. My final one that I used for my renderings was this image here. Notice all the different details that are easily seen and if we go in really close you can see exactly how much detail is here. And so this is the blurred version. And all I did was apply a Gaussian blur to my original to get to this point. And um, now naturally, if you have a model with the texture, you can always bring it into a package like ZBrush, Body Paint, whatever, and paint in all those details. Sometimes you don't have that luxury. So that's what this tutorial is going to go over. So the biggest thing um, when adding detail to a texture within Photoshop is make sure you're using the right brushes. I can't stress enough how important good brushes are to the entire texture painting or digital painting process. So in this case we're going to be using a lot of the Nagel brushes that are found on the website or on the forums and in this case the skin ones. And so what I have here is I have all the Nagel brushes um, kind of like collected all the ones related to skin collected into one library. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to choose this one right here, which is 483 um, unit size. Unfortunately, there aren't a whole lot of ways of browsing um, these individual brushes. And we can go into the preset manager, and we're already at large thumbnail size. And so there's not a whole lot we can do here to really see how these guys end up looking. So I'm just going to choose the 483. If we bring this over our canvas, we have to make sure we choose a visible one. You'll notice that's a pretty complex little brush here. And this one is great for skin. So I just press F on the keyboard to maximize it. And I'm now going to zoom in a little bit closer. Now the big thing to notice about skin texture and skin painting is notice all the changes in color that we're receiving here from throughout um, the entire face. Now just over an area that would be seemingly the same tone or the same hue, watch the color picker as I drag over. Notice how it's subtly changing between all of these different shades. And that is very important to creating a realistic skin texture. So what we're going to do here is we're going to choose kind of a dark color. So we're going to pick on kind of like one of the moles. We're going to go back to our brush. Notice how complex our brush is. We're just going to press it down a few times. You can kind of start to notice it changing its tone. Notice the difference. If I zoom in, it's very, very hard to see, but there's a lot more detail here. See here's it's very very smooth all over this but as I turn this on there's like a subtle breakup of the pixels. And so we can make this a little bit more noticeable by choosing a darker color. So we're going to go to our color picker, we're going to go to saturation and we're going to drop the saturation. We don't want that much color. We're going to now go into brightness, drop that down. And with our brush selected, I'm going to go in here and do this a little bit. Now we can also go to a new layer, bump up our opacity all the way to 100%, click once, twice, three times, and you can kind of notice the pattern in this case. Notice how much it broke that up. And then you can kind of see it underlined there. Now once you have 
this. So let's actually make something a little bit nicer and a little bit cleaner to work with. So here I'm going to choose a dark red color and I'm just going to give it a little bit too much there. And I'm going to drop the opacity to bring it into the range that I'm interested in. So there we go. And just so we can see it, I'm going to bring it up a little bit more than usual. Now, from this point, you can continue to layer up these at different colors to try to get a nice variation in the skin tone. But what we can also do is we can also try to use other features to break this up even more. So, for example, we could try using an emboss filter. So we already got something going here. So you notice how it creates this problem along the sides. We can always clean that up after the fact. So just pay attention to this interior area. Very, very subtle difference. And we actually want to get in very, very close here. So we have a better idea of what's happening. All right, so if we go back to our bevel and emboss, and let's jump forward to some nice settings. Okay, so these are the settings I have. I have a depth all the way up to 1,000%. It may seem a little extreme, but wait until you see the results. Size, very, very small, because we don't have a lot of space in between the dark and light areas of this layer. So we want to make sure that we get the actual bump effect to occur in between all these little spots. And so we only have a very few pixels, so I bump that up to only about four. And then very, very little softening. So when I turn this on, notice the effect. It gives a lot of nice dimples and creases and all that great stuff. So if we now jump back... Notice all the nastiness and all, all the problems it caused right around the edges. Now what we have to do here is we have to soften that up and erase it. Now there are a couple ways that we can do this. One, we could try to erase it as is, but as you'll notice here, go to, uh, I have my standard brushes, so I will just use this. brush size down. Let's go to a different one. Something that's nice and solid. Alright. So as I remove this, notice what's happening. We're still getting the emboss effect on the edge, so we're never going to really remove it, per se. Even if we try to soften this out a lot, we're not going to really get the results that we're looking for. See how we can kind of soften it out a little bit, get rid of some of that noise around the side. And that's actually what we're going to do right here, is we're just going to clean up the edge to make our life a little bit easier further on. Now we're really only interested in this area right in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to finalize our filter settings. So we're going to right click on our layer effect and we're going to go down and click on create layers. By doing so, it will create individual layers to try to simulate or recreate this effect that we're seeing. And that's what this error message or this warning message says. Sometimes you're not going to get 100% accurate results. So we just click OK. And you'll notice that it ended up creating two other layers. Created our shadow and our highlight. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to collapse these three layers into one another so that we can then easily remove the areas we don't want. If we wanted to, we could get rid of one component or another. But since we want both of them there, we're just going to press Control e on the keyboard, or we can go up to Layer and click on Merge Down. We're just going to do that once and twice. And notice what happened. It accepts the layer mode of whatever um, 
the last one is. So if we go back, see there, just multiplied them all, and we're back to normal. So what we have to do is we have to select all three layers and then go up to layer, merge layers, or control E. So instead of doing each one individually, one at a time, we have to select them all and then bake them or collapse them all at once so that each layer maintains its properties or its mode and we just get a normal um, layer at the end. Once we have this, we can then go in and kind of erase the parts that we're not really interested in. So that's all of this embossed edge. So let me just work our way all the way around. Okay, so here we have very, very detailed skin pores. We can then adjust the opacity if we want to make it a little bit subtler. We can color correct it so that it matches the surrounding skin a little bit better. We can also sometimes switch into overlay. Sometimes helps. You'll notice up here on the side of the eye. If I turn this off, nice and smooth, I turn it on, we get this bump effect in there. But it doesn't change the overall color of the skin too much. And so you can play with a lot of the different settings here to try to get that noise that you're looking for, but without making too many sacrifices in terms of visual quality. And so the ones that I typically end up using a lot are luminosity, because this is just basically bringing the shadow or the creases in. So I usually bring it down quite a bit. And then we have a lot of nice deep creases in there. Another option is the, the overlay, which is a popular one. You can also try to go to screen, sometimes works, but usually only on darker surfaces. And that's about it. So that does it for the Photoshop side of things. And let me go back to uh, luminosity, actually. All right. So that brings us back to here. We got a lot of nice details. You can use these exact same techniques to add more stubble to the face, more wrinkles, um, or just more splotchiness or color difference across smooth, consistent areas. Like you look at the forehead here, notice how many different colors are actually in place. And it goes into a pretty evident red and dark brown over here to much lighter colors over here. So you can use these techniques for that and get a lot of your detail where it needs to be. Excuse me. Now, what happens if your UVs are set up in such a way that you're inherently going to get stretching. Now, if you don't have an ideal UV setup, um, or sometimes you don't have, you know, perfect distribution, you're still going to get stretching and smearing once you bring the texture into 3D Studio Max, Maya, whatever. So what you can do at this point is we can actually use 3D Studio Max and its UVs to try to create additional detail. And you'll see the pros and cons of that right now. So let's jump into 3D Studio Max. This is the original rendering. And this minus the eyes and bump details and so on and so forth. And so what we're going to do here is a little trick in which we... Actually, I'm just going to go back over to here. And that image that I just had up right here, notice it doesn't look too bad for the skin texture. But if we ended up in zooming way in to, let's just say, the cheek area, say we were printing this out or uh, rendering this for print, Okay, so 
here it doesn't look so bad, but if we end up changing our mode up to blow up and just zooming in, and so basically what it's going to do is it's just going to take this little area and make it fill our entire resolution. And so what we're going to do here is we're just going to take a close-up look and just notice how blurry and soft that is. Now this right here is probably the resolution it would be if you were actually rendering this out for print. And so, you know, if you ended up printing this out, it's just going to look all blurry and not very good. Whereas here, this doesn't look so bad for standard computer monitors. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a method that we can use to increase the amount of detail that we have for those very, very close-up shots, or when rendering at a very, very high resolution. So the way that we do this is we're going to end up basically creating a second set of UV coordinates that we're going to use for noise and other techniques to try to break up that surface a little bit. So here's our texture. I'm going to go down into maps and we're going to do this in the diffuse channel. So we're going to click on it. We already have our texture there. So we're going to click on bitmap. We're going to choose mix for right now and keep the old. Swap them. And we're going to put our new texture right in this top slot just for testing purposes. I'm going to assign this. It's already there, but we're going to use an explicit map channel. I'm going to set it to 2. I'm going to drop our size way down. Set it to fractal. And then we're going to test right away. And it's not picking up 2, so we hit cancel. Go ahead and assign a UV map modifier. We sort of set it to channel 2. We're going to choose cylindrical. And we're going to render. Alright, so this is the detail that we would get from the smallest size here. Now, since this is a nice noise texture, we can easily tile this. So we can go to 2. Render out again, even finer details. We may want to exaggerate it in one direction or another. So we can try to get the pores and the skin cells and everything to go in one direction rather than the other. Another method, instead of the standard noise, is to use the cellular map type. So we're going to discard the old. Visualize it. Again, use an explicit channel. Set it to number 2. Render it out. Way too big. So we drop our size down to the smallest. Render out again. Okay. Now this may not look like something that you want, but it actually creates a very nice organic look. If we turn on fractal for the cellular pattern, run it again, it breaks it up very well and we kind of get that splotchiness or that pattern that we get with normal s skin. So we can increase it and switch over to chips. I think I went way too big. Yep. Way too big there. And so you notice just with one click up of the size, notice how big it got. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to change the tiling here to a much higher amount. And since it's a very chaotic texture, we can get away with these sort of tilings and not really see any seams. And so this is unfortunately the path that's involved with dealing uh, or dealing with um, 
noise textures or cellular textures is you often have a lot of trial and errors. And that's why it's important to just really do a quick test, you know, a very simple rendering, not much lighting, and just keep on going back and forth to try to get the results that you're looking for. And so in this case, you might want to tweak the values just a little bit further, just to spread things out. Now, if you say you want to have a combination of the two, what we can do is we can click on cellular and go to RGB multiply. We want to keep the old, and this is like the multiply in Photoshop. So the areas that are one or basically pure white aren't going to affect the other image, but the areas that are black or gray are going to kind of con contri contribute to one another. So we're going to click on noise here and use some of our settings from last time. Bump up to number two. We go to fractal. And remember we had that. And notice how they kind of work together. So we got little bits of noise inside of each of these cells. And so I'm going to actually bump that up. So we have a little bit more detail in there. Okay. There we go. I'm going to jump back to cellular. We're going to make this black a little less severe. So we don't get as many really, really dark spots. Okay. Now, this... RGB multiply right here. There's a couple different ways that you can use this. Personally, what we've been creating here, because we haven't really been dealing with color, is ideal for the bump map section. So this is something that you would add to your bump, your existing bump map that you painted in Photoshop to break it up at a much finer level. We're going to take this Alfred. We're going to copy it. I'm going to right click on where it says mix and I'm going to paste copy just simply to re replace it. And so if we go down and we render this out now, this full color, look at how it broke, it broke that up. We get these nice breaks with the skin. This may be a little extreme, um, almost like chapped skin, but you can see the effect that it has particularly around the lips. Look at what it did there. Gave a really nice breakup. Now, I didn't have any other bump map on here yet. Just this one. So you can kind of see it, how you can add additional details to your model so that when you render it at a very high resolution, things look nice and presentable. And so if I was actually doing this for a final project, the way that I would continue to work with this is I would reduce the cell separation so it's not as strong because these are a little bit deep for my taste. I may also make them a little bit bigger. Um, I would also probably change these colors a little bit to get the effect that I want. And so if we back up and render this guy out again, You can notice at this point, it's pretty extreme. I mean, it looks pretty nasty right here. And so what you might want to do is go in and reduce the amount of bump and how that is done as well. And so the big thing to keep in mind here is that there's a lot of times, unless you have a really nice um, anti-alias or multi-sampling filter for your renderer, you're often going to see something that doesn't look too good in a zoomed out version, but when you're zoomed in at the one-to-one -one resolution of where you're going, you could find some very, very nice results. And so here we just reduced it. It may be a, still a little bit much, but what we're going to do to test it is we're just going to blow it up to get a very close look. So it's very important that you consistently do tests at your final resolution. 
even if it's parts of your resolution or you're only looking at part of the image at full resolution like we're doing here. It's very important to do that because bumps and colors and textures and all that stuff look very, very different when you're rendering at very high resolutions than if you're rendering just to the computer screen or to standard video output. Okay? So, hope these two techniques give you a few ideas and um, let me know if you have any questions um, or tips of your own. Thanks for watching.